Today, I have a very, very, very special guest on Passionate Living um, who is well known for many of his roles in the world of acting as Woja Howitz and Barney Miller, been on General Hospital, been on many other shows through the years. But he's also behind the scenes done a great amount of work to help support the American Indian movement and other great projects and just want to introduce you all to my dear friend Max Gale and Max welcome to Passionate Living. Hi Kat, it's good to see you again. It's so good to see you. Now tell me, tell me a little bit about when you were in Barney Miller. I think the magic of that show was the mix of all of your energies. I mean there were some amazing talents in that show. For the many who maybe never saw the show or whatever, you know, Barney Miller, it was set in a squad room, right. a detective squad room and, and the captain's office. And all, all of the shows took place in that that little in, environment. So it had an element of, of a play. And, uh, and the writing was really wonderful. I've been having people sending me scenes and stuff lately, more than more than for a long time, I guess, just because that's the way the internet is now, but a lot of it holds up. But we really, it was very collaborative. We had a great uh, ensemble. Uh, we really tried to find the humor in things. through the door. <laughs> My friend Wavy Gravy says, when you lose your sense of humor, it's just not funny anymore. <laughs> uh, so uh, it was very helpful to me because I, you know, those were times coming through those the 60s and 70s, there were a lot of things to, to be uh, depressed about, just as there are today. <laughs> you know? It almost feels like recycling of a lot of the same things that were coming to the surface in the yeah, 60s yes, and 70s yes, are yes. once again surfacing and mm -hmm. we're having similar challenges in this day. And yes, it, it's one thing about uh, living longer is you you do understand that a lot of these things are just part of the deal. We don't suddenly find world peace at last, right. which when you're younger, you feel like maybe that's attainable. Uh, thank yeah, God for young true. people. It's for a circle, it. it's a cycle, and, and it's funny, yeah. cause you you were working with circles for a long time, that was a big thing for you. The circle is a natural way for people to come together, right. people, you know, and and uh, and universal. You know, after Barney Miller, I got married, I had a child, found out my wife had cancer. When she passed, I became a single parent for a few years, and I kind of dropped out to deal with that, you know, and then I remarried and had some more wonderful kids. and. And, uh, and I, I went back to work on a, on a TV show and I had changed and TV had changed and it just didn't um, come together in a way that left me wondering what, what I really wanted to do next. And then around that time, computers were showing up in a way that they could be in people's household. Uh, the internet was just starting to get accessible. The browser was almost out there for, for people. It was a college project at that time, but the the possibilities of us having a better conversation as a species were, uh, you know, clear to a lot of people right. without seeing the possibilities of Facebook and, you know, where we are now, where also we could all have a, a worse conversation, but it seemed clear that people needed access to that. Yeah. So I got very excited about working on how to get these tools into more people's hands in the inner city, on the res, rural areas, you know, which are a lot of that is part of the part of the build back better, you know, infrastructure efforts now to 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 get to make sure more people have, actually have access. And in the process of working on that, I really came to see how how if you can get people in a circle instead of you know in seats in an audience looking at a panel you can change the whole conversation. And the more you can get people telling their stories to each other, the more you can help them get past a lot of the divides. Oh, that's beautiful. Wow. That's... I think COVID, COVID uh, interestingly, it kept a lot of people from meeting in, 
in, in M-E-A-T space, meets, you know, in, in right. physical space. But, uh, but it did, uh, um, I think, help a lot of people have a conversation where everybody's looking at each other. And, see, you know, even though it's on a screen, but anyway, the notion of dialogue is a conversation with a, st a center instead of sides. Oh, I like that. That's beautiful. Holly, wait a minute. You, you may be new around here, sweetheart, but you take it from me. Stay away from this guy. He's filth. You stay away from my son. He's not going to throw away his life working for you, Joe Scully. Now, you were in uh, General Hospital recently, right? Is that you're still off and on on that show, right? Yeah, no, I, I came in for what was supposed to be a couple or three months. I uh, wanted more like a, almost three years, uh, but it was an Alzheimer's arc. They brought, they recast it, obviously. There had been a guy who played the, the part of the lead, the lead guy on the General Hospital, and it's a huge cast. And I never really paid much attention to the soap opera world, uh, but um, a lot of people do. It has very developed, but that's the storytelling fix for a lot of people. <clears throat> and Maurice Bernard, who played a kind of a good looking Tony Soprano, he played a ma mafia leader, but he's the main, I guess, lead, lead guy, if you were to put it that way, on, on a General Hospital. And they brought his dad back after him been, been gone for a number of years. The backstory was the dad was a, a gambling addict and a washout as a father. But he, they decided, well, let's bring him back. We'll recast him because that actor had retired. Uh, he's gotten into Gamblers Anonymous, so he has a 12-step program. So he's found some tools to help him understand why he keeps making the same bad decisions over and over again. And um, but but it turns out he has Alzheimer's. You know, he doesn't know it then. They don't know it, but somehow that gets him back in the family. Something that happened out of him forgetting to drop some money off somewhere. And uh, uh, and uh, and the writing was wonderful, and the the the, the people that would turn out there were you know people on the set, on the crew, other actors. So many people have been touched by Alzheimer's. So it was a you can't turn away from who you are, and the past will always come to find you. And what if I don't want to be found? I know, son. You like your life in. Mix and falls. Damn straight yeah. out. And you love being Mike. Yeah. But there's only one problem with that. Mike is dead. One of the cool things about it that I like to tell people about, because uh, I got invited to be an ambassador for an organization called Project Lifesaver international but basically it was started by cops who saw that there was a problem when people would tend to wander often alzheimer's or other forms of dementia sometimes uh, autism and way too often it would be a very expensive one two three week search for somebody ending up in a in a sad outcome but if they could be uh, have on their wrist something that's you know using the same technology that we track wildlife with why they could be found often very quickly you know in the last place people would think to look um and and so it's grown so they're in many many communities and growing into more because it's it's set up to work with the police department and the community a lot of people have their loved ones in a, in a maybe a, a home or a, you know a place where where they have that going on if somebody leaves the property they find they they're they're uh, it's triggered right away but anyway so that's a that's a cool thing that i'm passionate about because it seems like every every week there's another notice that they've found found somebody real soon wow it is it's so beautiful to talk with you today and to share with you because i just you are such a light and the way you are with your family, with the people around you, with your community. And there's just such love and such care for everyone who's blessed enough to be in your path in this lifetime. And well, I feel- Thanks one and no one. <laughs> I know, thank you. Well, I feel so blessed. Well, I love you. I'm so grateful you were on the show today. I just uh, I can't thank you enough. And, um, and I look forward to seeing you guys when I'm out there, hopefully soon. 
that would be that would be great. But probably the minute the snow hits the ground. Uh huh. All right. Well, that's. <laughs> I do remember growing up, you know, in the on the Great Lakes, watching the. It was usually the Rose Bowl. Because <laughs> people are sitting up in their shirt sleeves. <laughs> What's the deal? Well, Buffalo is notorious for that. No. Back here yeah. right now. Um, yeah. You know, the snow, it'll be a pelting snowstorm and they'll be playing football and you'll see these guys out there with no shirts, probably with far too much alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Buffalo written across their chest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You that's know, a, people, though, that's, you that's, know, that's, that's the level of. Lakes, too. That's a level of passionate living that is not uh, definitely, appreciated. <laughs> definitely a level of passionate living that yeah. you're probably not missing being now you're out in the warmth and the yeah. ocean. And, oh my God. Thank you for joining us today on this magical ride into passionate living. Join us each week on Tuesday and Thursday evenings at 8 and Sunday mornings at 11. Plus, you can view segments of our show on YouTube at passionateliving.tv or on our website at passionateliving.com. Our goal in producing the show is to inspire you to live your dreams as your journey will end up affecting the world around you in a powerful way. We hope you'll join us each week as we journey into the realms of passionate living. Until our next adventure, remember to take at least one baby step to bring you a little closer to living your dreams.